Hello YouTube, and before I get to the back of that, it looks like Joseph Bryant, who started on the outside of the front row, just had a malfunction in his car, and it looks like he will not get to the start. What a crazy start. And that and <clears throat> now I will do a hello YouTube. This is NASCAR 48 W two buff here, and we are getting ready for the INO World Dorsal Cup series, race eighteen at Chicago after a long wait. Henry Sanford has the pole. And it looks like Brian James will have the out... No, Leo Rogers will have the outside pole. And Joseph Bryant looks like he, he's not going to get to the start of this. That is a bad hunch for him in points with only a few races to go till the chase. Now, the drivers on the bubble for the chase are Sean Henley, Jake Rogers... And Charles... Yeah, Sean Henley and Jake Rogers are on the bubble of getting knocked out. Same with Jacob Sisko. But now you have the points leaders up here. I mean, you got Brian James, Jacob Lawler, you got um, David Rochester, Dylan Young up here, the hometown boy, Seth Cole, and Gene Samper. I mean, a lot of the points contenders are starting up at the front. And we are green here at Chicago. And Henry Samper already out to an early lead. Tristan Trivet, who really could use a win, right behind him. Hopefully everybody got through that first corner, okay? Looks like everybody did, but they're going to go three wide back here. Oh, they're looking to go four wide. That is not a good idea. William Duncan going to move Tony Blazer up. They get real close to that wall. Got to be careful, though. Oh, and look at David Rochester way down on the apron. He Whoa! He almost made it four wide. He did make it four wide. He's all the way on the apron. There are four or five wide in corners. And Rochester just lost a lot of positions. And they just held that without wrecking. And Henry Sanford is still the leader with Brian James trying to chase him down. Oh, Sanford gets real close to that wall. Yep, it looks like everybody's okay, but David Rochester, look how many positions he lost. He just got knocked back outside the top 20, it looks like. And they're still going three wide. Look at the run he gets on the outside, but they're just going to go flying by him here, coming off the corner. And that kind of separated the field, too. And the, like the first group and the second group. Oh, Tristan Triven in the wall. She's going to bounce off. That's going to block Sean Henley and Tony Blazer down to the apron. But he gets back up in time. And Tristan Triven got a good piece of that wall. But now he's coming back to the inside of Tony Blazer. Going to get into him a little bit. They're beating there. Oh, man, these drivers know it's time to go because the chase is coming. But they want they don't want to go too fast or, do, or they'll wreck. Justin Triffitt's still working on Tony Blazer. Sean Henley into the wall a little bit. He's going to lose a couple positions there. Joseph Bryant coming back out. But your leader right now is Henry Sanford running away with it. With Jack Richards and Brian James right there. And look at the run Brian James got on Jack Richards. Brian James could use those extra bonus points for leading a lap. Because I don't think he's led one yet. Oh, here comes the 78 into the mix. And the, the whole field is split by about four seconds from the first car to the last car. Sean Galligan coming into this. He's working hard. I mean, he's down like 35th, and he is a rookie. He joined late in the season. But you never know what could happen. If he can get another win, that could be very useful. And caution is out. Race back to the line. Henry Sanford going to lead back to the line. And Brian James may just fall back outside here. And Brian James going to go fall back to fourth. And your leader is Henry Sanford. Let's see what the wreck is. Ooh, Olga Oko involved. That's not good for her. And I think that was about the only one involved. Everybody else is just trying to slow down here. You see Jeffrey Buckeye at the back. Not where he wants to be. And... Lucky Dog would be the 21. But we will take you to see what happened to Olga Ogo. And then we will get you back to the green. This is just asking to be wrecked. They're three wide. They're looking to go four wide. Yep, there we go, four wide. Kyle Stewart going to make it four wide. Jacob Sisko slides up on the Gene Samper. And going to get in 
to the 56. Now look at this. There's two points contenders right there in the mix of this. And they all keep it together. Cisco's still going to get some fender damage. Same with the 10. But, I mean, that was a lucky break for Cisco that the 6 was there and the 56, or he would have definitely wrecked. Look at the 6 uh, sliding there. Really, it was only a one-car incident. But that was just a lucky catch for Cisco, who's 10th in points, with threat of falling out of it. Same with Gene Sanford, who's 4th in points. Let's see that full speed. He just got very lucky that the 6 was right there, where that could have ended horribly wrong. Oh, there you see the 17 getting into the mix. Same with the 5, they're gonna... Oh, that was close. Then the 10 and the 15. We're gonna have to go on onboard here with the 10, who saw everything right there. This was just asking for something to go wrong. We will take you <coughs> back to the green here from Chicago. We are back. <coughs> Sorry. Henry Sanford is your leader. Sean Galligan second. Jack Richards third. William Duncan fourth. Sean Henley fifth. Austin Ogo sixth. Jacob Lawler seventh. Tony Blazer eighth. Anthony McCurry, the uh, rookie ninth. And Dylan Young, the hometown boy, tenth. And where's Brian James? He's in 33rd. That was one hectic pit stop for him. Same with Tristan Chivet. Not a good pit stop for them. And there you see Joseph Brown, who was also up there. He is four laps down. Henry, Henry Sanford's been the dominant car today, but it looks like he's about to get passed because the 99's using the lap car as a pick. But the 39 coming back on the outside. Jack Richards has help from the 19, but Henry Sanford going to slide too high and get into the wall and lose a couple positions here. Actually, a lot of positions there. And they're going to go three wide off the corner. Sean Gallican gets into Henry Sanford. They touch, but they keep it together. Man, this is some hectic racing here at Chicagoland. Oh, they're going to go four wide, I think it was, back here. No, they won't. Dylan Young getting close to the wall. He probably knows how to drive this track the best due to, to the fact that it's his hometown track. Because he's probably been here all of his childhood taking notes or whatever. And he probably knows how to drive this track real well. But just look at this mob of cars right here. Three wide all over the place. Henry Sanford, you see, continuing to fall it back. And look at the run. Pony Blazer got through the middle there. But Henry Sanford still fighting back on the outside. But, oh, Jacob Lawler going to put the block on Blazer. But Blazer going to get that outside advantage. Look at the run he just got. Oh, Caution is out, actually. Oh, Brian James involved. Same with Tristan Trivet. Two points contenders. Oh, that is... Brian James had that 40 points lead <clears throat> over second place. Wow. Major change in points right there. But we will take it to see what happens. That looks like a very scary wreck here from Chicagoland. We are back now. Let's see what happened here. It's three wide with three points contenders. Jacob Sisko, Brian James, and Tristan Trivet. Now, what happened to set this wreck off? It looks like the 78 barely touched the wall. They're all in the middle groove a little bit. Does Brian James come up with Does the 24 hit anybody? Yeah, Brian James gets into the 78 a little bit. And let's see, they're going to go into the wall. And oh, Brian James. Oh, my God. And Dill. Oh, my God. Oh, that was horrific right there. Dylan Poti just got a windshield right into the 78. The 78 just went flying like a saucer. Then we had the 51 stuck in the fence. Wow. Just wow. That's all I can say. Let's see that again from a better angle. The 51 slides up into the 78. And right up and over they go towards that wall. And Seth Cole, all four points contenders running right here. 
51 just gets in the wall and right into the catch fence. And a 78 right there. And oh, Dylan Poti right through the windshield. Look at Tyson Broad going under them. Wow, that was a pretty scary wreck right there. I'll have to see that again. I mean, we are getting worried everybody is okay and perfectly fine. But just, you know, I mean, only a three car incident, but they all basically flipped. Look at Brian James, just right stuck in the wall. There comes Dylan Putty. That car is at least two to three feet off the ground, all four wheels. At least two to three feet off the ground. We've got to take on boards with every single driver. Let's see that full speed. Wow, that was a pretty scary wreck here for here at Chicagoland. Dylan Poti wasn't even near the wreck, actually, too. Now let's take it on board with Brian James here, then we'll take it on board with all three of them, and then we'll take you back to the green. Wow. That was a pretty scary wreck right there. Now with the 78. Now with the 16, and then we'll take you back to the green. We will take you back to the green here from Chicagoland. We are back with more retired cars. The 20 has retired from an engine malfunction. 16, 78, and 51. Wow, two contenders in the championship right there. And Jacob Sisko has won a lap down for no reason that we have word on. <clears throat> Sean Galligan, the leader. William Duncan, second. Tony Blazer, third. Dylan White, fourth. And Jacob Lawler, fifth. Now, this is chances for David Rochester, Gene Sanford, Seth Cole, and anybody else who's about in the top seven in points or so. Chance to strike. With Brian James, your points leader, wrecked out here. And if they could just get the win, that could be a huge benefit for them. And Brian James probably going to be very mad at, him, at, at himself for sliding up that high. And now you see Tony Blazer going to take the lead here. With Jacob Lawler right there behind him. Jacob Lawler trying to make a comeback in points. He had a tough past two races and trying to regain his points here. What it, what it would be if he could get a win here today. Get his third, his third one of the season. Oh, Sean Galligan gets into the 21. There they go, Sean Galligan ar around in front of the whole field. But he saves it. No one else hits him, but caution will be out. No, caution will not come out. And what a tough break for Sean Galligan. That is a tough break for Sean Galligan with no caution coming out. And he just went from about second to almost around probably 36th. But there's a wreck up there and he somehow got through it. And David Rochester was in this wreck. Another points contender involved. See all the wrecked cars. 14. Oh, 14. Charles Sam for 14th in points is in. No, 13th in points is wrecked. And your leader is Jacob Lawler. It looks like everybody's okay. Oh, uh oh. 11th in points. Jake Rogers has some rear e some rear end damage. Tyson Broads has some damage. And it looks like ever that was it, but we will take you to see what happened. So this is what happened. Gene Sanford gets into 34, puts him almost into the wall. Ooh, some championship rivalries there. Gene Sanford versus David Rochester, maybe. Then Charles Jackson gets up into him, and Charles Sanford gets a piece of that. They all three spin out, blocking the road. Now, did Jake Rogers get through this? Yes, it looks like he might have did. Oh, the 18. Look at the 18 going all the way down there. Kyle Stewart going to just nail the two in the back. 
56 is there. They see the 42. Oh, and how did Seth Cole get somehow through that? Oh, nope, there he did. There, there's his little piece there. Sean Henley and the, f and, and the 42 getting a piece there of Chuck Togger. How did he get involved? Just, maybe there's just basically a roadblock for him here. Ooh, Dylan y Young almost turned them. There you see all the field going by. He gets a push from Dylan Young, which couldn't allow him to get by. Dylan Young gets by. Ooh, Leo Rogers gets by. And Sean Hanley gets a hit in the back. He's going to get into the 42 there. Enough damage to hurt him. They're just going to go sliding through the grass. Seth, Watch how close Seth Cole was getting through this. He came ever so close to getting through this wreck. And just hole closed up on him there. Ooh, Jeffrey Buckeye, who's up there in points, gets by. And he's going to get a good fender hit there. So let's take an on board here with Seth Cole, and then we'll take you back to the green. And then actually, let's take an on board here with the 42 of Trek Talker. And then we'll take you back to the green. Chuck Togger is out of this one. Same with a few other drivers here. But we will take you back to the green here from Chicago. We have just passed halfway a few laps ago. New retired cars. <clears throat> 14, 6, 42, 98. 73 is one lap down. 21 is three lap down. He has gotten one of his laps back. Your leader is Jacob Lawler. Tony Blazer second. John Wilson third. Richard Johnson fourth. And William Duncan fifth. Rochester, I think, is still in this. Yes, he is, but he's back in 30th. That was actually a lucky break for Sean Galligan also, who's going to try to get back up front after this wreck. But he's stuck behind a couple damaged cars. Rochester shouldn't be that too damaged. So he could stick up with speed here. But he definitely does not have the fastest car now. Oh, Kyle Sinoski gets into Richard Johnson right up in front of the field, and William Duncan gets by that Gene Sanford involved, and a pile up right in front of the whole field. Oh, and Seth Cole and David Rochester somehow got through that. No, they didn't. Seth Cole just got a piece of it. And did Rochester get... Yes, Rochester got another piece of it. And Sean Galligan got through that. Lucky break for him even more. And just Wow. Dylan Young got by that. Hometown boy. And I can't even see the front straight away with all that smoke. And your leader will end up to be George Roke somehow. And I think Jacob Sisko just got the lucky dog to get back on the lead lap. But we definitely got to take you to see what happened there. This is in front of the whole field here. Watch this. So Snosky's on the apron here, and I think. Bla yes, Blazer hits the wall, 93 down on the Sosnowski. He makes a great save put there, but once you get in that grass, whatever direction that car is in, you're going to go. He gets in a three, and whoa, William Duncan almost got involved. The one is there, and then Gene Samper, who is second in points up there now. Looks like now all the drivers are starting to have troubles, and it looks like two Sanfers got involved. Henry Sanford who was dominating this early part of the race. You see the five right in front of everybody. And he's going to spin Caitlin Skipper looking to get by that. Jacob, <clears throat> Jake Rogers getting involved. Leo Rogers got through that, I think. 56 and Sean Galligan barely got through that one. There's a 13 there. Now, how did the 34 and the 24 get back involved? They made it through that part. Or did Seth Cole not make it through that part? Oh, Seth Cole did not make it through that part of the... Wreck. 34, just trying to squeeze by, but can't. Because Gene Sanford hits the 5. And basically, your top 5 in points are all having troubles, but they're still going to finish ahead of the 51. So maybe something can happen here. 
28 gonna squeeze by that? Let's see how Anthony McCurry got involved. Oh, I, yeah, I, I see what happened. I think he hit the five. It was early on in that. Five just comes straight down in front of him, and man, he nailed him. The two runs into him. He's gonna get a piece of the wall and just slide back up. Sean Henley gonna squeeze by. And then Sean Galligan barely gonna get by here. Olga Ogo sliding. There's Rochester. And then here comes Seth Cole. And Charles Jackson gonna get a piece of that. How did Olga Ogo get involved? I didn't see her in this. Oh, I think hit. I think she hit Henry Sanford. Yes, yeah, she did. And Sean Galligan again just getting close hits here. And she's gonna stop with. Rear end in the grass. Let's take it on board here with Sean Galligan. Then we're going to take you back to the green and getting near the ending here from Chicago. Wow. Now we're gonna go back and see how close that really was. Let's see how close Sean Galligan actually came to the 56 of Olga Oyo. Wow. He may have just got that fender and printed a little bit there, but just wow. It's that close. They're maybe going to have to bend out that fender a little bit, but besides that, it looks like he got through that pretty clean. Now let's take it on board here with the 10 of Gene Sanford, who just was going good until this happened. Can't even see a thing in the smoke. Oh, just nailed the five. We are gonna take you back to the green here from Chicagoland. We are back. Jacob Cisco first car lapped down in 21st, and we have a heck of a new cars retired. 13, 9, 43, 5, 10, 3, 7, 39, 56, 24, 34. And we have 23 cars left with three lap down. Uh, the one of Austin Ogo, two laps down. Joseph Bryant, two laps down. And the 73 of Jacob Sisko, one lap down. Now, one thing I've been noticing, that 21 is two laps down. Now, the way we're wrecking, and if he can hold that front spot, I wouldn't be surprised if he's on the lead lap. And what will be, I mean, that would be history right there. I mean, that would be a Hall of Fame type thing. If this 21 could somehow get back on the lead lap in a 41 lap race after being four laps down. Wow, with all I had to say to that. But he has to get through these lead lap cars. And the 55 are going to get into him. And they're going to hit the wall. But they're going to keep it together. But that 51, I mean that 21 may have a tire rub. And now Jacob Sisko is going to go flying by him. But George Roke is your leader. And Joseph Bryant going to try to get back up there and pass that 73. Here you see Dalton Young, who I think finished third in the truck race here. Remember, this is a hometown track, so he's doing pretty well. And I, you could expect that from a hometown person. Caitlin Skipper right behind him. Got a rear view mirror full of that 48 car. But George Roke and Dylan White are just running away with it right now. See some off-pace cars here. Joseph Bryan already dropping all the way to the back here. Looks like that one part hitting the wall, it's going to hurt him. How about Sean Galligan up here in 11th, and they're going to go four wide. That is not going to work off the corner. That is not going to work. Oh, oh, it's working, it's working, and they did it. They just did that. No way they did that. I refuse to believe that they just did that. There was a car spinning in front of them, and they go four wide off turn two, and they kept it together. And no caution will come out. 
Tony Blazer has taken second, but George Roke looks like has the fastest car right now, with Tony Blazer trying everything he can to catch him. But Dylan White, the rookie, wants to do something about that. He's going to slide up next to the 55. It's a drag race off this corner. 55 going to almost get the wall, but the 27 going to zoom right by him now. And that 12 has opened up more than a half second lead over the rest of the field. As he is just running away with the lead right now. Look how far he is already. Now we're going to take you a lap around Chicago here with Dylan White. Unless another caution comes out this lap, I don't think anybody's going to catch George Roke here. The 27 could with that 55 falling back that far, but I don't think it's going to happen. That 55 is fast. Same with the 27. But here comes Jacob Lawler into the mix. If those two battle, that could allow the 27 enough time to catch that 12. Except for hitting the wall right there. That's not how you want to catch the 12. That 12 has opened up about a second lead. They dug in that time a little bit, but these two are battling here. Unless that 12 hits the wall real hard, I think it's over. And look at the 27 battling back on the outside there. Let's watch this outside line here a little bit. Except for that part of the turn. Is Tony Blazer going to fly away from the 27 who just hit the wall? But he's only going to have a few laps to do it here, to catch that 12. And they are digging into that lead. He just has to hope that 27 keeps hitting the wall so he has time to catch the 12. Or if somebody else can come up and pass the 27 and battle them. That 55 trying everything he possibly can. And he hits the wall again. And the 12 looks like he ha he's doing well because he is not hitting the wall at all. Now here comes the 27 on the, en on the inside of the 55. Jacob Lawler going for second here. He's up there in points. And he's going to go flying right next to the 55 here. And now this is what the 27 wanted. Some time some time but it's white flag is out for the 12 I don't think he has enough time oh but the 12 gets held up by the by two lap cars here comes the 27 of Dylan White the 12 was held up by two lap cars the 27 of Dylan White is coming Dylan White gonna go to the inside of the 12 here comes the 47 the 27 on the inside of the 12 here comes the 47 also the 12 is on the inside, but it's going to be Dylan White here at Chicagoland by a splitter. Wow! What a stroke of luck for Dylan White, and what a stroke of bad luck for George Roke. Wow! It's amazing how much things can change in half a lap. And Dylan White did it here at Chicagoland. And I don't think the 12 of George Rooks is going to be very too happy at Charles Jackson and Sam Young. Tempers will flare after this race. But we will take you to see another look at that finish. Here's the battle off the line. There you see the 47's pushing the 27, but the 12 had the outside line a little bit. And watch how close it comes. The 12 is actually catching back up to the 27 coming right there. But that's how close it was. That's that's about the splitter length. About the splitter length. Maybe about 
Yeah, about half front of the half the half of the front of the car, about half front of the car. And the 27 will pick up the win here at Chicago. And Dylan White will get his first career win in the INORL. Wow, just a heck of a finish right there. Let's rewatch that lap here. Just let's just see what that lap. Now look how far Dylan White is right here. Just look how far he is when it's back all the all the way over here. I'll just watch it from here. Then you know what else? Here comes Jacob Lawler out of nowhere. They're gonna go three wide right here. Jacob Lawler, I mean, he if that 29 was not there, he could have easily made it a three wide photo finish. Tony Blazer not too far back there. And the 12 is gonna get that run off the corner. But if that 29 was not on the outside of the 12, I think the 12 would have got en enough of a run off the corner. The 12 absolutely tried everything to catch that 27, but just could not. Just wow, what a finish right there, folks. What a finish. As, let's see, the margin of victory is 0 0.014 of a second that Dylan White has beat the 12. And this, I believe, is the closest... I in a world finish in history. Now I gotta go back to that truck race at Talladega, but I think Dylan White just won the cro the closest finish in I in a world history. But we will take you to your race results. We are back. Brian James still the points leader, but only by 18 points. David Rochester in third. Jacob Lawler gonna move up to fourth. Dylan Young fifth, and Seth Cole sixth. Now look how close these points are through the top six. That's how close it is. And how about William Duncan? Remember, he won the chase spot, but if he gets in the top 10 in points or wins a wild card spot, he can give that that <clears throat> chase card to anybody in the series that he wants. It could be one of his other drivers or somebody else. Because he won it, he can give it to whoever he wants. If, if he wants to, he can give it to one of his other drivers, like <clears throat> the 78 or, you know, people like them. But the people holding the wild card spots right now would be, I think, William Duncan. Now there's one, two, three, four, five, six. No, yeah, six drivers right now in the top 20 that have a shot at the wild card spots. Now I'm just gonna do another example of how <clears throat> how they would get into it here. Now the way they would do it is. Oops, sorry, kind of blanked out there for a second. And I will show you your race results in a second. But if anything, it goes on top 10. So Dylan White, who's 14th, getting that first win, will be 11th right there, beating Sean Henley. And then there's two drivers with six top 10s. There's, no, wait, sorry, he doesn't have a win. Now Jack Richards has six top 10s and one win. So Jack Richards would have 12th. That's how it's be. And here's your season standings. I accidentally clicked this one before race results. So I guess I'll just show you this one. But thank you for watching. We are going to take you to your race results here from Chicago.
Just double checking the points are still right. <laughs> But we will see you next week at Kansas.